Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so good to see all of you here that are in person. We are grateful to those of you who woke up this morning and you are sipping on coffee in your pajamas, but you're ready to worship. It is really good to be back in worship. Let me say to you that as you might have noticed, uh, we've got some things that are going to be changing. We are going to be making some adjustments. You got to know that the adjustments are being made very strategically, very methodically, and in some of your minds, probably too slow. But we're being careful. <laughs> All right, yeah. But we're being careful. And we're being careful because we love you and we want you to be okay. So here's what you need to know. You've noticed we've taken away the temperature checks. We're not signing in uh, people at the door, which brings me to my first adjustment. QR codes are going to be our new way of getting you registered and knowing that you are here. There are QR codes in all of the pews. If you would come prepared to take out your phone or your iPad, uh, flip phones probably don't work. <laughs> and if you have a flip, then I'll be more than glad to let you use my phone or you can let a neighbor use it. But it's going to be a touch-free way, David, for us to get you signed in. Don't become frustrated if it doesn't work for you because it's working for most folk and we'll help you if it's not working for you, okay? We don't want this to be frustrating. We want it to be fun. I'm saying this even now because some of you who are watching are going to begin to come back as we begin to open up and do things differently. And I want you to know that when you come back, bring your phones so that we can scan the QR codes and get you in, all right? One of the other things that's going to happen sooner than later, no, let me go back. The other thing that we know needed to happen sooner than later was all the doors are open, all the front entrances are open. So you don't have to park on the far end to come into the main building. You can come to the main sanctuary, or you can actually come to this side over here as well. All the front entrances, as well as the back. One back, the main building, some of you come into Sunday school back there, and we wanted that to be more comfortable as well. So just re your parking now is in various places, and it's based upon where you want to park. One of the things that I have not talked to anybody about but Carrie and Jesus, and I know the trustees are going to address it at some point, but is that we're going to eventually re uh, uh, extend our parking particularly in the front and at the entrances, for senior parking. And what that means, Karen, is that you don't necessarily have to have a handicap sticker. If you qualify as a senior, we want to make it convenient for you. We want to make it convenient for you. Okay, there are other things that are coming. Um, these blue and yellow tabs are going to be stripped. That's part of what I said to you earlier. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have you sitting in alternate places any longer. If you are, in fact, vaccinated and you're comfortable, you can sit where you like in these two main pews, however, uh, starting next week, probably we will take these, these side pews and hold them open to, for those persons who need to have restricted seating so that we still keep people comfortable and we still have people coming and feeling good about worship, all right? Uh, it's good to be here. I'm glad you're here. We pray God's continued blessings on you. Won't you stand to your feet and let's sing together as we... Giving my hopes and dreams to you, 
remain standing and join me in our call to worship. Children of God, do you love the God who hovered over the face of the deep and called the worlds into being? Then feed God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who was revealed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ? Then take care of God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who breathes new life into us even as we gather this day? Then feed God's children. And will you join me as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Klein EMC. We're so glad to have you in worship with us this morning. Don't forget to sign in or leave a comment letting us know that you're worshiping with us. Our student ministries will be doing their annual week of service called Dauntless this June. They still have spots available for homes that need a little extra work done. Please contact Marshall or Pam Coleman if you have any questions or would like your home to be put on the list. Don't forget to sign up for VBS Decorating Day on May 2nd. Lunch will be provided. This is open to all ages, especially if you'd like to help out with VBS but can't the actual week of camp. Signups are also going on now for Musical Arts Camp. Camp will be July 5th through the 9th, right here at Klein UMC. Volunteers and participant registration are open on our website. Register early as spots are limited. Save the date for our next family movie night on May 14th, rain or shine. We're going to try again and show Call of the Wild. The movie will start right after dusk. We are also looking for greeters and ushers as we get ready to revamp our worship experience on Sunday mornings. If you are a current or former volunteer or are interested in serving on Sunday mornings for the first time, please fill out the survey on our website or contact the church office. For more info on the programs and ministries going on here at Klein, check out our website at www.kleinumc.org. Have a great week. Hi friends, I have my three roosters. Okay, I know some of them look like chickens. And my three sheep here today to help tell our Bible story. Before Jesus died on Good Friday, he was arrested. Peter, one of his disciples, denied knowing him that day. Peter said that he did not know Jesus. One time, two times, three times, and then a rooster crowed. Jesus had actually predicted Peter's actions. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus told Peter, very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Now. Peter had told Jesus he would lay his life down for him, but he couldn't even say he knew Jesus when the time came. He was afraid. Can you imagine how Peter felt after Jesus was gone? The story with Peter and his three denials does not end with Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus came back to visit with his disciples and he spoke to Peter. He said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Simon Peter said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Simon, son of John, 
do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Those three denials that, that Peter made before Jesus' death turned into three announcements of love for Jesus. Did you notice that each time Jesus asked if Peter loved him, he didn't just accept Peter's answer of yes. He gave him three commandments. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus didn't want Peter to say he loved him. He wanted Peter to show he loved him by loving and caring for others. Jesus is the good shepherd. He takes care of his flock. He takes care of us. But he needs help. He needs his disciples to love him and love others. If you say you love Jesus, he wants you to show it. Feed his people. Take care of his people. Feed his people. See you next week. Amen, amen. I always feel like opening the doors of the church for making gets done. You know, that's what you do after a good sermon, right? You open the doors of the church and see if anybody's been converted. Uh, we love her. We thank God for it. It's prayer time. And I am so glad that we take the opportunity at every worship experience to spend some time talking to God, both privately and corporately. So much to thank him for because we are truly blessed. And yet there are things that are yet unsettled and so, so much to ask for. But the good news is he knows us, he loves us, and he's available. <laughs> so let's take a moment and seek God. Welcome in this place, Lord, you welcome, come on in, Ooh, Lord, you welcome, thank you, Lord. We need you to have your way. Send your anointing. We need it in this place. Send the anointing, Lord, do it for us. <laughs> oh, 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 the anointing, let it fall, let it fall. Oh, your way. Would you bow with me now as we pray together? Loving God, here we are again. Those who you've made by your own hand and called by your own name, here we are again. In the midst of this worship experience, stopping now to acknowledge that you are the sovereign God and that we need you. God and can't do anything without you. God, there's so much on our hearts and minds that we want to say and yet we know that we can't say it all and we're, 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 we're gratified for the fact that you already know but it just gives us some sense of solace to be able to talk to you about it and so God in the midst of everything that's going on we pray now that you would know how thankful we are for the way you continue to bless us thank you for keeping us Thank you for holding us. And even in those times when we needed you to deliver us, to heal us, oh God, thank you for the healing that you've already done. Thank you for the healing that you're doing right now. Thank you for the healing that you will do in days ahead. Thank you 
for being available to us and allowing us to come to you and to talk to you about the things that are near and dear. And so God, we pray now that you would look among this crowd and look among those who are worshiping in their homes and know their situations and understand their circumstances. And God, in the midst of wherever they are and whatever they're doing, help them to know that you are the God that they can trust. Be it medical, financial, emotional, whatever it is that we stand in need of, help us trust you in order that we may get it. Oh God, we love you and we know you love us. We pray that you bless us, that you fill us. And then ultimately, God, we want you to use us because we want to love your people as Jesus has commanded that we do. We pray all of these things now in his name as we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray saying together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let the church say amen and amen. Doing something a little bit different today than we've done with our children's choir before. This is actually their chance, first time all year to be helping lead worship this year, so it's really special. And what they would like to do is accompany our next hymn. So if you'll please stand, we'll be singing Amazing Grace accompanied by our children's choir. Please take your seats. Great job, great job as always, as always. We come now to the section of our worship where we invite you to give. As you know that we are, have baskets placed outside, all the entrances, and therefore you can drop off your Donations, the ushers will take it up and make sure it gets seen. And if you're worshiping online and you're not here, you want to be able to hit that push pay 
button or whatever electronic mode you need, you can text. What I used to do before I learned to do push pay, uh, I would text. And so it's, it's all available to you according to your desires. If you're here today and you want to use the electronic giving, it's fine. We thank God for that for you. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for the way you love the church by giving consistently. Pray with me now as you. God, we love you for the way you bless us. Thank you for the opportunity now to give back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with. Thank you now for the privilege of doing ministry through giving. Continue to bless our gifts. Continue to bless the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your presence for 
A reading from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? <laughs> he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him this third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. So we have been preaching a good bit from the Gospel of John lately, and so I figured I would just go ahead and finish it out this week. Um, I know you know, but John is a very different gospel than the other three. The other three are called the synoptic gospels, and they're called synoptic because they pretty much see things from the same way. They use the same source documents. They tell the story in a similar way. But John does not. John is very different. And everything that John tells you, you need to understand. Everything God, John tells you is not just historical, it's theological. It's there for a reason. And John tells you that himself. In chapter 20, beginning of verse 30, he says, you know, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not told here, but these are told so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that by believing you may have life in his name. He tells you straight up. He's telling you this story for a purpose. It's all theological. So we've talked a bit about how Mary Magdalene came looking for Jesus in the garden on Easter morning and encountered a gardener that turned out to be the risen Christ. Then a couple of weeks ago, Lawrence preached about how Jesus first appeared to the disciples the night of the resurrection. He came to them behind closed doors and said, Peace be with you. But Thomas wasn't there, so the second appearance is when he appears to Thomas, because Thomas had said, I will not believe unless I put my fingers in the nail marks in his hands. So Jesus appeared again to the disciples and came to Thomas and said, look, here they are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't doubt, but believe. So we have that background for what is going on in this chapter in this story of Jesus having this an encounter with Peter. But we also need to know what happened right before Jesus talks to Peter. So at the beginning of chapter 21, there are seven disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Peter says, I'm going fishing. And so the seven disciples get in a boat, and they head out onto the sea, and they fish all night. Now there are seven disciples on the boat, five of whom are named... 
Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James, and John. One we know is the beloved disciple, and the seventh, we don't know who he is. They fish all night long, and they catch absolutely nothing. Not a thing. But as the day breaks, as a new day starts, they look and they see a man standing on the beach. And that man yells out to them to cast their nets onto the other side of the boat. And the disciples did. They cast their nets onto the other side of the boat, and when they did, they caught so many fish that they could not pull the net back in to the boat. When that happened, the beloved disciple looked at the man on the shore and he said, that's Jesus. So Peter threw on his clothes and took off swimming to the shore to go meet Jesus. When Peter got to the shore, Jesus was there next to a charcoal fire and he was cooking fish and he had bread and he was making them breakfast. And once the rest of the disciples had hauled that boat with all those fish to the shore, Jesus told them to bring their fish as well, and he fed them breakfast. And then he sat with Peter and had this discussion that is our scripture reading this morning. Now, you may think, why do I need to know all that to understand what's happening with Peter? But I submit to you that to hear all that, you can discern that Jesus is on a mission in this chapter. He's on a mission. And his mission is to bring the disciples out of their shame and into ministry. Now, how do I know they're living in shame? Well, there's a couple things. To begin with, those first two encounters that they had with Jesus happened in Jerusalem. And in those encounters, the first one, Jesus says, you know, peace be with you. He breathes the Holy Spirit on you, on them, and then says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go, go make disciples. Then the second one is the meeting with Thomas where Jesus offers Thomas the proof that he needs and says, I'll meet you in your doubt. I'll help you. I'll meet you where you are and I'm moving you forward. Both of those happen in Jerusalem and this chapter opens 80 miles away by the Sea of Galilee. They're fishing. They're back to doing exactly what they were doing before they ever met Jesus. They've gone home, and they've gone back. When Jesus said, so I send you, I don't think this was what he was talking about. I don't think it was to go back fishing. Why didn't they go? The second thing that strikes me as this being a story about shame is that little detail about Peter putting on his clothes to go for the swimming. Now, how many of y'all get fully dressed to go swimming? I'm just curious. I don't. I had three kids that were in a swim team. I've been seeing CUDA pictures on Facebook. Woohoo! summer swim team is going. And it's so much fun. I was actually the queen of the ready bench, if any of y'all have done swim team. Woo-hoo. It's quite a thing. But those swimmers, you know, they put on those tight bathing suits. They have their swim caps. My son went on and swam in high school as well. And, you know, the coach pretty much left them alone for most of the season. But when it came to the last meet of the season... The district meet, that poor boy was in there shaving his legs, shaving his underarms, because you swim better and faster, the less you have on you. And Peter gets fully dressed to jump in the ocean and do a 100-yard swim to Jesus. Now, why would he do that? I don't think it's because he's ashamed of his nakedness. I mean, these guys have been living together for three years, basically camping, bathing in rivers, It's not that. Remember I told you everything that John does is theological? Everything? The the gospel of John begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, we're supposed to make a connection. That connection is Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. Well, in this story, we're supposed to make a connection as well. And it's to the other story of creation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And after they ate of that fruit and their eyes were opened, what happened? They realized they were naked and they were ashamed. They were ashamed. 
and they hid their bodies because of their shame. John is telling us Peter put on his clothes because Peter is covering himself. He's covering his shame. He's going to meet his Lord, but he's covering his shame. So he arrives on the beach to see Jesus cooking beside a charcoal fire. The last time Peter has stood in the Gospel of John by a charcoal fire is outside of Pilate's house. He stood outside of Pilate's house because he had followed Jesus after he had been arrested. He wanted to see what was going to happen. And as he was outside of that house and Jesus was being tried inside, someone asked him by that fire, aren't you one of his followers? To which Peter said, no, no, I don't know him. And a little bit later, someone asked him again, are you sure you're not one of his followers? No, no, not me. And a third time, I could swear I've seen you with him. And he swore and said, I do not know the man. Three times. But once again, Jesus is meeting the disciples in their need. He's meeting them where they are and giving them exactly what they need to be able to move forward. And what he is giving is forgiveness. Especially to Peter. Peter, Jesus begins to slowly unwind Peter's shame when he asks three times, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. And feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. Well, tend my sheep. Peter, do you love me? And yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Well, then, feed my sheep. Jesus had already said, so I send you. But now he's empowering Peter to go. He's saying, yes, Peter, so I send you. Yes, even you. Maybe even especially you. I send you the one who denied me three times, I send you. Because it is not our perfection in our walk that makes us disciples of Christ. It is not. It is our love that makes us disciples of Christ. And Jesus says clearly, if you love me, you will tend the people I love. They had seen the risen Christ already. They had seen him twice. He had told them he was sending them out, but they couldn't go. They couldn't go because shame held them captive where they were. So I would ask you this. On that boat were seven disciples. One has no name at all. Why would John do that? I submit it's because with one unnamed disciple, we get to write our name on that list. We get to put ourselves in that boat because we have all had our denial moments. We have all had those times where we have ignored Jesus' call for us to care for those around us. We have all fallen short. But just like with Peter, Jesus is still calling us out of our shame, out of our greatest failures, and using them. There is absolutely nothing in your life that cannot be redeemed. And in fact, there's nothing in your life that cannot be used. In fact, I think Jesus is empowering us to use our failures to serve, believe it or not, because think about the witness that Peter had Peter, you know, had a testimony about redemption after failure that beat everybody else's. Thomas had a powerful witness to what it meant to be in doubt and met in that doubt and moved beyond it. James and John 
they had a witness about what it means to sleep through one of the most important moments of your life. How many of us do that? They had a powerful testimony. And most of the disciples had a powerful testimony after this of what it is to be faithful after abandoning their Lord to die alone on a cross. All of them were redeemed and all of them were used. Jesus called them out of their shame and then sent them to serve. So there is absolutely nothing in your past that could ever stop you from being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Nothing. And shame is not from God. Jesus understood that that shame hindered the disciples' work. It kept them from going out into the world. And I think that's why he specifically redeemed their shame and sent them to work for the kingdom. And I believe he still does it to us today. With me and with you. So write your name into this story. Accept his redemption. And then move. Move. Feed and take care of his sheep. Because Jesus still asks today, do you love me? And if you can answer yes, then feed his sheep. Will you pray with me? God, we're so grateful that you do give us this witness that tells us the past will never define who we can be, that we can move beyond, that you call us out of shame and move us as powerful witnesses in the world, not in spite of, but maybe even through what we have done. So help us to be faithful, to hear your call, and to answer, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn. That's in John 2. But he knew that we had to step out of our past and out of our shame and let that stuff go and use it as a gift to empower us in ministry in the world. So don't go back fishing back where you were before Jesus found you. Move forward. Move forward in the power and freedom that Jesus gives you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.